Hi guys, good morning, good evening, good night from whatever you're watching. Um, today's sermon is probably going to be a little shorter than it is usually. Um, let's pray. Father, be with us in this moment. Lord God, speak to me. Speak to me. Change our lives like only you can. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. Make everyone feel special this this day, Lord Jesus. Permeate our hearts with your love and your grace, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hi guys. I hope you're doing well today. I know I am. And as I was praying this week, um, the Lord said, tell them to love me. Tell them to fall in love with me. That's what he said. And we often say that love is the greatest um, commandment in the body of Christ. But I don't, I don't think we really understand what love is until we understand who God is. We understand, we, we often say that God loves everyone. But I think that God is love. Therefore, all he can do and be is love. And we often say that God is God is a righteous judge. But I think the righteousness of God is the the embodiment of who he is, not just an attribute and it's uh, when I think of the love of God it's so unfathomable if that's a word um, the love of God means to me it's um, it's beyond giving it's beyond anything we can ever um, comprehend um, I think the problem in many churches are with many people's lives are when we say we love God, I think our idea of the love of God is so connected to, to, to human love and human understanding that we have no, no real idea. It's like, it's like take any celebrity like um uh take britney spears i can know everything about Br britney spears i can know her birthday i can know uh, everything i can find out online but i would i wouldn't know her in her intimately like i don't know what kind of cereal she likes in the morning I don't know what her bathroom at counter looks like. I don't know all these things I don't know about her because I'm not intimately involved with Brittany because of what I read and who knows what you re if what you read is true. It's, it's the same thing with God. A lot of us love God um, because we think we love God because we know the Bible and we know his word and knowing his word is only one aspect of him um, because if you if you really understand God um, what we we would endeavor to do is to embody his character and I think in order to embody his character uh, to embody his graciousness and embody his love and embody his gentleness and the other fruits of the spirit. Um, we need to really understand this love of God and I think we can only understand it if we look through the lens of how he loves people. Um, we often think to love people, it means we need to approve of what every
everything they do, we need to accept everything they do to accept the person or accept who they say they are or accept whatever it is about them. If we accept everything about them, that means we love them. But I tend to think um, accepting means to embrace. Uh, the person no matter what they are and who they are you don't need to accept what they do to embrace them um, when I look at Jesus and the Gospels and how he operated with people and when I look at the different stories I Jesus never um, condoned or felt the right or felt the compulsion to say um, whatever anyone's doing is right or when I okay let me explain it this way when I think of the woman at the well he never at any point said oh oh I love you, it doesn't matter what you do, just just know that I love you. It wasn't that weak kind of love. It was a very strong kind of love. And he didn't start on her, on her sin. He started from where she was. Like, back in those days, a woman coming to draw water alone in the heat of the day it was totally unheard of uh, for a woman to do that and for a man for a single Jewish man to even communicate with a, uh, a Samaritan woman at the well that was, it was totally unheard of First of all, the Jews and Samaritans didn't talk at all. Culturally, they didn't communicate at all. They didn't talk at all with one another. So the fact that he went out of his way to meet her, to, to meet her where she was and bring her up higher. Sorry, that was a notification. Um, and bring her up higher spoke volumes of his love and he just started a conversation with her he sat down with her he he conversed with her he said um he said oh he offered her a drink he met her at the point of her need uh, often, um, but, uh, I think Christians do the misguided thing um, of, of um, yelling Christ out to people and uh, preaching at street corners and doing all this without knowing where the person is coming from. And I think we as Christians need to, first of all, know where people are coming from. Have a relationship with people. Um, not only just to get them saved, but just because they're people. You know, I think sometimes we often forget that people don't react well um, because of what what you know people react to who you are and I think if we can come down off of our churchy clouds and you know really communicate with people on a level that they could understand we would win more souls that way I was thinking um, instead of focusing on inviting someone to church and, and doing the quote-unquote Christian thing, 
why not just focus on them as a person? Maybe they're not ready to come to church. Maybe something happened to them. Maybe they're an atheist and don't even believe in God. So you inviting them to church is not going to do anything. But if you can approach them for who they are, they will be more apt to listen to you. Um, I was talking uh, to this young lady. lady um, I see her uh, quite often at my doctor's office. And um, she, is, she looks always sad and always uh, whatever, really down and really distraught. And not distraught, but really down and really in the dumps most of the time when I see her. And I, I kind of made a, what some would call um, an outlandish joke to her. And she laughed. And as I was talking to the Lord about this young lady, um, and after that, she built a rapport with me. So that the next time I see her, she will be more open and I can talk to her, I can break the ice. And um, some Christians would say, why did you say that? That's an inappropriate um, way that you joked with that person. And the, the Lord said to me, at least you had an open door. At least now the door is open and the door, uh, you can uh, one day introduce her to me. See, I think we as Christians have it all wrong. We think we need to drop the seed. We need to, um, we need to do the saving. But no, uh, Christ does the saving. All we need to do is be a friend and be there for that person. And I've heard it said many times, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I think we are so focused on, oh, we have to, we have to uh, do this. We have to get, the, get this many people. We have to get people baptized or into the church. But the real reality is we don't. We don't. That's not our job. Our job is not to fill uh, seats or benches or whatever. Our job is to be Christ's hands and feet. And when I looked at the Gospels, uh, when I looked at the ministry of Jesus, he never invited people to a Christian synagogue thing. He met them where they were, and because of the person he was, they loved him, and the people inside the synagogue um, hated him because they thought he was too radical. I think um, that when you understand that you don't have to be someone's savior, you don't have to be on a mission to save souls, just be compassionate to the person, just be willing to listen, willing to help, willing to show love, willing to, you know, show compassion to people. I think that's when we'll see the world, world turn around. I, um, I don't think the Lord would be happy with, like, churches full or whatever. I think the Lord would be happy with, with people having a real encounter with Him by His love. And real love sometimes um, tells the truth. 
real love, uh, with love, it embraces the person where, where they are, but it also tells the truth. I think so many people are so afraid to tell the truth, um, so afraid to tell what's right is right and what's, what's wrong is wrong. Hey, I always say this. I always say, um, it would be this way, but biblically it's this way. Biblically, it's here, but I'm here. Or, you're there and I understand, but biblically it's this way. And if they don't want to, if they don't want to, um, follow the Bible as yet, that's okay. I'm just, I would just tell them what their certain situation says biblically and whatever. Um, and when I'm talking to uh, somebody with a certain sin, uh, with a certain moral thing that I don't agree with, um, I said, I always say to them, look, we all have something that would nail our butts to the wall biblically. I know I have, have a lot of things that are in the Bible not to do or in the things that I should be working on. We're all working on something together. And I think we need to understand that we're all in this together. Nobody's um, quote unquote there, we're all in this together. And when people understand that you see them and see who they are and see the light in them and see their brokenness and see their potential, that's when they will open up to you. When they feel that you're not on a mission to fix them, when you're just there to love them, when you're just there to be a friend, when you're just there to lend a helping hand. I think we need to understand that we're, there's only one comforter and one Holy Spirit and we're not it. We, we don't, con, we don't uh, condemn people and real conviction coming by the Holy Spirit. And when you show people the real love of God, and when you embrace people where they are, they're more open to the gospel. And you may, you, you yourself may never tell that person about um, the, the Lord directly, but you may want to receive that would have them thinking about the Lord and months and years later that seed may come to bloom. But if we're so focused on, well, we need to get more people saved and we need to do that. No, we don't. God does that. All we need to do is love people where they are and if we are called to do it with that person, um, bring, bring them up to God's standards. But only if we're called to do it. Because sometimes with the Lord, he will have one person do one thing, one person do another thing, one person do another thing, and so on, until that one person that he that um, um, whose heart is being worked on gets to their ultimate destiny. Um, I think we just need to embrace people. I think we need to, when necessary, tell people the truth. But we need to understand that, that we need to show people that look you might deal with this, but I have things too. Listen, there are things in the Bible that would nail me to the wall. There are scriptures where I read 
and you I fall down in tears because I know I'm not there yet and I desperately want to be there. So my thing may not be their thing, but it doesn't mean that my thing is any less sinful. And, um, and that will be a, my thing might be a testimony one day, so might their thing. And God uses the broken places um, the bro to make a mosaic of beauty and we need to embrace embrace the brokenness not in a way that says I'm broken and I have to stay here but in but embrace the things that make you kind of quirky I'm not saying brokenness, brokenness. That needs to be dealt with and put at the cross and dealt with with counseling and, and friendships and all that. I'm not talking about that kind of brokenness. I'm talking about the brokenness that makes us quirky. And we need to embrace that and let God use that. So if you're a, a loud person and like to talk to people but sometimes you're a little broken you, no you're a little um what people say you have a big mouth maybe god will use that for something great one day you need to embrace that and let god um let god help you with that let God use that for his glory. And I think when we do that, we'll just be so much better off. And I think to love people is the most powerful way ever. I think instead, we, we tend to as Christians, yes, we need to stand for things, but we tend to as Christians look at things very one-sided um this is this and that is that and there are some things that yes we cannot afford to um lean one way but what i'm trying what i'm coming to understand is there's more than one side to the story um i was watching something um the other day um, about abortion and how um, these abortion laws were happening and how we needed to stand up against them. Yes, I do believe we need to stand up against abortion and be pro-life and whatever. But saying that, I think we need to understand that the issue of abortion is not just one-sided. We're, we're focused on the, li the lives of, of the lost children, yes, and they need somebody to speak for them. Yes, they need somebody to fight for them, I agree. But what about the lives of, of these women who feel that they have no other choice to make such a decision. Are you gonna start uh, start homes to house these women who have no place to go, who, who've made mistakes, some of them in high school, and just said, come on in, uh, we'll take care of your baby, we'll, ha we'll give you the money to take care of your baby and will give you a job to support your child. Um, so I think issues are so uh, multi-layered and I think the thing to do instead of getting on our high horse and saying this is wrong, this is wrong, is that we need to have compassion and understand that issues are not just issues. There are, there are several reasons 
why people get into situations that they do. And sometimes with abortion, uh, the woman is young and, and she doesn't know what else to do. She's scared and she, it looks like the easiest way. And we tend to vilify these people um, without knowing that there's a person inside that's hurting and needs love and needs protection and needs kindness and, and needs compassion. And I also was thinking about the homosexual community too. Um, another community which we've not um, been great at showing love to as Christians. Um, we, we either stand in one of two camps. The one of two camps is, the one camp is, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. You're gay, there's nothing you can do about it, so let's just celebrate and whatever. And the other camp is, you're going to hell, you, we cannot do this, and, you know, you cannot uh, be gay and serve the Lord, you're a bad person, you're a dirty person, you're a nasty person. And I doubt either one of us, I doubt people that are saying those things in either camp have sat down with uh, especially the negative camp maybe the overly positive camp has um but especially the extremely negative um camp have hasn't even sat down with um a gay person with a lesbian person to understand their issues to understand what um, what went on in their brain or in their family or in their lives to uh, spawn that kind of um, what way of being. Excuse me if I said it wrong, but you know we haven't sat down and had a conversation. Maybe if we did, we'd understand more how to show Christ to those people without con condemning or condoning. Um, I think I've I never I've never seen Jesus as much as he loved people. He didn't say to the woman it was okay. He said, he said, you're in this, but I want better for you. And that's what he would say to us all in sin. He's like, you're in this. I understand that and I love you, but I want better for you than this. Come up higher. I have, I have much more greatness in store for you. I I have more than happiness in store for you. I have a f fulfilled life that you would not be able to imagine. And I think if you, if you approach people like that, they would want to know who this Jesus is. People don't want to come to a church. People want to go to a Jesus that loves them and accepts them. Although um, although Jesus does not condone everything that anyone does, um, but he accepts and loves us all. Um, he embraces us all, but he expects us to come up higher to his standards. And we all get there at different places. And God puts people in our lives at different times to show us the way at, at different uh, places and spaces of our lives. So where I'm at spiritually is not where you're at spiritually and where you're at spiritually is not where I'm at spiritually. And sometimes 
I could be weak in one thing, where you can be stronger in that one thing, or I can be stronger in one thing and you could be weaker in that one thing. We're all going through this together and we need to understand that Christian or, non or non-Christian, we are all going through this together. So guys, God bless, take care. There's a voice crying out in the silence, waiting for someone to appear. Long for a child that I will heal it, give him it all, give it all, he wants it all. And there's a God who walks all over the earth, searching for a heart that is desperate, long for a child that will give him it all, give it all, he wants it all. Today he says, love me, love me with your heart. Forgive me if I got the words wrong. I think I goofed up on the words there. Um, seal this word in our hearts, O oh Father. Teach us. Grow us by this word. word. Let our words be few and far between. And let our actions be many. Lord God, I pray that you'll increase my love and, and increase your spirit in me and everyone out there, Lord God. Touch each, touch each spirit, whether people are watching in three years from now or whether they're watching right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'll see you la later. See you next week, guys. Love me, love me with your heart. heart. You want to know today. Love me, love me with your heart. heart. You want to know today. You want to know today. You want to know today.